Man, I, I really need to get like into the OnlyFans game, you know? And it, it's if not me not me personally, like to get into the OnlyFans. I know I joke a lot about it, but I mean more the whole idea of finding like a woman and investing, you know? I don't mean <laughs> I don't mean marriage or anything, but uh, my buddy uh, Rhetoric Inc. was telling me about this process, right? So, what you do is you find some, like, Instagram hottie that, you know, already has a following, right? She's pretty or whatever. Uh, and you get a hold of her and tell her, you know, hey, check it out. I'll invest so much cash so that uh, you can get whatever surgeries you've been wanting to, like, heighten your blue book value of your body. Mm-hmm. Whether it's that she wants bigger tits or tattoos or lip injections or butt lifts or whatever, right? So, I would pay that or the person investing, right? Pay that, get the girl nice and, you know, cam ready, you know? And then you set up her website, like a private type server, so she can communicate with these marks. Or or just get her OnlyFans set up, right? Whatever you want that third party included, right? Uh, get it set up for them and have the girl just start creating that sweet sweet content right and then you get paid give her her cut maybe give some other dude a cut who sends out the erotic messages to private chatters and, and sends those thirst traps to people still on the fence of wanting that more intimate one-on-one you know and you as the investor you know start to cycle all over again until I don't know, you have an army of cam girls and just that endless source of money coming in. I, I, I think it's genius, really, you know? That's like some Breaking Bad money. Uh, yeah, no, it's <laughs> it's a great, great idea. Uh, I know during Cyber Monday, I signed up for an OnlyFans. I hadn't signed up for OnlyFans in a while, but this was like a $2 one-month deal. I was like, oh, shit, yeah, I got two bucks, you know, and change right here. It is the lead singer of, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of Pussy Riot. It's uh, like a girl pop group from Russia who are like super feminist. And I mean, she's a cute Russian girl, right? She, I mean, she got that small chest that I really like. Uh, and, you know, I was hoping maybe there'd be some content there where she's dressed like a matryoshka doll. And like her bras coming into a smaller bra into a smaller bra. Into a smaller bra until you see your titties, right? You know what I mean. That's the joke. No, in all serious note, though, she's pretty hot. Like, but but she's always protesting shit. Like again, of course, against Russia, the Russian reg- regime. But she's also showing me her pussy and her tits. So I'm like, hey, that's pretty smart, you know. Like, not only are you making money off of your body, but also you can maybe sway some political opinions of men and. I don't know, lesbians, by having them masturbate to your porno propaganda, your porno ganda, your pussy ganda, right? Yeah, okay, yeah, I guess that's funny. Oh. I chime in with the haven't you people ever heard of closing the goddamn door? No! Fun fact about me, uh, I worked at Burger King, but for just like a month. Yeah, I was there in my hometown, and when I was working at Taco Bell, and I wanted, like, a second job for that fucking money, I uh, applied at Burger King, and, man, they hired me super fast, and at the time, it was ran, I don't know if it still is, it probably is, it was ran by some Indian couple, and I don't mean, like, you know, Native American, oh, Christopher Columbus, oh, fucking hates me, Native uh, Indians, you know, but I mean, like, Arab, Saudi, Muslim type Indians, right? Uh, and yeah, they were like, they were like the opposite of those Saudi oil money tycoon ones. Cause bro, like these ones were, were like just stingy, you know, like the, the bosses, it was like a husband and wife. They would watch like us as we gave napkins and condiments to people and made sure we only gave like two napkins per person one condiment per item and it's like oh if they want extra you charge them for it or you don't want it or whatever anyways yeah 
Like, I gave it my best and tried to stick with it. But, yeah, like, nah, fuck that job. I quit after, I don't know, I think a month. I don't think I even lasted a month working there. But I say the best part about that job was uh, one of the weeks I was scheduled for, I don't know, like a weekend, two, six-hour shifts or something. And the shift right before another shift, I forgot to clock out. So, like, I came back in the next day and just, like, <laughs> clocked out and then immediately clocked back in. And just for those two days of work, I ended up getting, like, 30 hours paid for that, you know? It's pretty good. That's what you get when you let your heart win. Whoa, ho, ho. I feel like um, Greta Thunberg and who is it? What's her name? Jojo Siwa are, like, one person. But they were, like, separated by emotions, you know? Like uh, Greta Thunberg being the bitter one who tries to save the world by uh, being annoying with climate climate active change activism, and Jojo Siwa always like being super happy trying to save the world by coloring it with rainbows and unicorns and Lisa Frank type fucking vomit, you know? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was some like weird Swedish experiment, like you know, where they separated a person emotionally in half. I mean, they did make the Swiss Army knife, right? No, right, no, wait, that's that's Switzerland. Whatever, man. I can talk shit about Switzerland. They're not going to get mad. They'll just stay neutral with that shit. I know the pieces fit. I know the pieces fit. Doon, 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 doon. That shit goes hard. Um, If you're looking for new books to read, check out the this author, uh, Edgar Carre. He's a uh, he's an Israeli writer and he writes some like crazy ass short stories. Uh, there's this one that I always think about sticks with me. It's called uh, "What Do We Have in Our Pockets," and essentially it's about a dude who always has a bunch of shit in his pockets, right? Like they're just bulging huge, like <laughs> like bag and sag and berry from fucking all that, you know? And uh, yeah, people people will, like legit talk shit to this guy who has all this stuff in his pockets, but he's always saying like, "Nah, I'm like, I, it's not random. I'm always prepared for everything." And he's like saying, uh, "Like, what if I'm at the bus stop by a mailbox, and a pretty girl walks up uh, to me, and she's short a stamp for her letter? So you know, I go into my pockets and pull out a stamp, and then she smiles and says, thank you." And then let's out a little cough. And then I pull out a cough drop from my pockets. And then like when the woman asks the man, what else do you have in your pockets? The man romantically says to her, everything you'll ever need, my love. Everything you'll ever need. It's a, uh, I don't know. It's such a great story about how I guess like true moments of chance might not actually be left up to chance. I don't know about how we, we ourselves prepare in life. Even it's just small things. All the small things. It's the idea of saying uh, yes more and saying I'm sorry less. You know? I think that's that's sweet. That's a great way to, to end. But yeah, that's that's it for today, you know? Uh, go make a goal for this month and sign up for someone's OnlyFans or Fansly or... I don't know, buy something on Clips for sale. Uh, I've always said... And I will not stress this enough. Support your small businesses. Uh, those people are small businesses too. Uh, they need love. So I think you'll be happy you did supporting them. Especially, well, Cyber Monday might fall to this whole week. So maybe you get a good deal over there, huh? And uh, yeah, if you do sign up for uh, Pussy Riot's OnlyFans, together we can fuck the patriarchy. Or at least, I don't know, watch some girl... Fuck a dildo that has like Putin's name or face written on it or drawn on it, you know. And uh, and fuck Burger King, man. Like I I really do not understand why it's still in business. Like who the fuck is keeping Burger King in business? Like honestly, like it, they say flame broiled, but their burgers are frozen. And then they say it's impossible meat, uh, but it's cooked on the same fucking line that is, uh. <laughs> the, the same cooking line for the regular meat it just it makes no fucking sense whatever well maybe i'm just bitter right and if you like my bite-sized content 
because you know I'm like a fun, fun time Snickers. Uh, check out Edgar Carre. Yeah, he has like such great short, short stories that they'll make you think. And oh, there's also got a v- video on YouTube of him like building the world's thinnest home. Like I think it's a Guinness World Record that how small his home is. It's like a house that's literally built between two buildings like a little you know alleyway but very very tiny barely walking it like the widest it is is five feet Uh, go check that out and i don't know maybe it'll inspire you to like you know uh write stories or fucking build tiny houses because tiny houses are cool man (coughs) even if they make you claustrophobic you know But yeah, that's it. So um, have a great day and take care. Bye.